boys and girls. Here we are at our next lesson, our next step for our nonfiction final copy. So today um, you're going to need your book like this that has your paragraphs written in it. You are going to need um, some kind of papers like this that I sent home to you. Um, yours might not look exactly like mine, but everybody has a way to step-by-step -step draw their animal. So you're going to need those today, <clears throat> and that's in the envelope that I sent to you. And the other thing, and this is what we're going to start with, is you're going to need this paper. And it says nonfiction rubric on the top, and I just hand wrote it, and I don't want you to worry about most of it today. There's a small section that we're going to be working on. I'm going to show it to you up close, okay? So, you see where I drew the little pink stars here? You are going to work on drawing a diagram with labels. You are going to figure out which illustration you're going to use in your book to write a caption for. Tell what's going on in that picture. And you are going to save a space on one of your pages to write a fun fact that kind of goes with that page. The other thing you're going to be working on is having all your pictures colored and um, making them really nice. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The reason why the word map has a question mark by it is that some of the animals that you are researching, it could be really interesting to put a map in, showing maybe where they live. Or um, if you have tigers, say, and at one time tigers lived in a large area in Asia, and you could draw that map of Asia and then draw where they used to live in one color and then show where they live now in a different color. And I know we looked at those um, in some of the books that you had and also online. So if you do want to draw a map on one of your pages, you're going to want to use your computer and type in your animal's name. So say it says tiger range, R-A-N-G-E. And then that will show you, and then you want the word map, tiger range map. And then that'll give you some maps. And don't pick the most complicated one. Pick one that's pretty simple to draw if you want to draw that. Um, so there. So you might want to have this close by you too. So we're going to work on our illustrations today. And first, I'm going to show you how I don't want you to do it. So this is a fake page. I just made a page that say, says, what do bats look like? And I put some of the words at the bottom. And what I don't want you to do is this. Oh, what do bats look like? Yeah, I can think of what bats look like from Halloween. Yeah, that's what I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw a bat and it kind of goes like this. And then, oh, I used purple instead of black. Oh, well, doesn't matter. I'm going to think I just might put the eyes up here somewhere. Yeah, that looks good. And then um, I'm going to color it in. And, oh, this isn't really turning out that good, is it? Oh no, this is an awful bat. And now I've done it, and I've done it in my book where I've worked so hard writing, and I dove in straight with crayon, and it doesn't look at all like a bat, does it? What are some things that I did wrong? Number one, did I use my helper to help me draw? No. So that was something I did wrong. Another thing is, I dove right in with crayon. It didn't even check the color I was using. I just thought, ah, oh, that looks dark, and I picked it, ended up being a purple before I even checked. But I also didn't start with a pencil. I want you to start your drawings with a pencil. So if you make a mistake, you can fix it. So first I will show you this up close so you can laugh at how horrible my bat looks because I did not take any time to draw it. And the, one of the reasons I sent you home with these papers with your step-by-steps is so that you can draw a bat that you can actually label. I can't even label this bat. Basically it's wings with eyes plunked on top and that's not even really how a bat looks. So, I took a little time before I started teaching you this lesson to work on my page for what does what do bats look like. And it took me quite a few minutes to follow all of these steps and draw this bat. And I really took my time in my sizing because this is my diagram of a bat. Remember back on this page I said I wanted you to have a diagram with labels? And because I drew my bat big enough, because bats aren't that, that big, because I drew it big enough, kind of use the space on the page, I have space to label the parts of my bat. So, look at it. I could label the ears and the nose and the hand, which is this part, but it's also the wing. 
I had space to label the feet and the toes. I had space to label the fingers. So, and you see how I even saved space around the edge so I could write what I was labeling and then I drew a line from the word into the body part of the bath. That is what I want you to do. And I'm going to give you a whole week to get this done. So I want you to take your time on each page. Do one page a day, something like that. Now, my next step here is that I have to color this. And I need to plan ahead because the bat I drew is a little brown bat. So it is brown. And then I've got to figure out how I'm going to maybe make some of the other parts stand out when I color over it. I think what I'm going to do is trace in a darker brown first around the edges and the important parts of the bat. I'll show you in a second once I get this side done. I'm gonna use my brown crayon and kind of trace in a dark way. Then I'm going to color it in lightly um, in the big spaces. And I think that will work. So, so far, I've only done a part of it. You, st you watch how long that took, see? I traced that like that, and then I'm gonna take my crayon and lightly color brown inside of that. And you'll see how I'm working on a small space at a time so that it doesn't end up looking scribbly. Coloring kind of in the same direction. See, little by little, I'm filling it in. You may use crayons and you may use colored pencils. You may not use markers. No markers. And you know why. Because it soaks through the page, because it doesn't allow you to do any kind of detail. Only colored pencils or crayons for your illustrations. And then I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do more of that, but you don't need to sit here and watch me color a bat. I'm going to do its eyes a different color, probably black. And I might even use a black pen to do the eyes because it's really small. Same with the nose. I might do the mouth a little pinkish and the ears pink in here and brown on the outside. I'll show you that because I can do that right now. Pink kind of ish in here. Let's see. And then I'm going to do brown on the outside edges. I need to trace the outside of these ears too. I think that'll make it look a lot better. I'll show you that in a second. And around his face. But as you can see, it takes a while. And I'm going to do the details on the face before I do the brown over the top. So there's one page. So what do bats look like? Is this done? No, it's not done. But I know you understand what I mean. So you need a diagram with labels. This is really the best place to draw your diagram. Draw a great detailed picture of your animal and label the parts, a diagram with labels. So let's write that up here on the board. Number one, we're gonna write no, can you see it? Uh -uh. Markers. Exclamation point, no markers. Number two, you need a diagram with that stands for with labels of your animal. Okay, let's see. My lights are shining in there, so it's strange, aren't they? Okay, no markers. Diagram with labels. You are going to use use pencil first. And then color with crayons or colored pencils. You can use both. Okay, now my next page. Because you don't want every page to be a picture just about laying there, right? So this next page is about where do bats live? And I decided to draw a map to show North America so I'm going to write the words North America on it with a pen, and then I'm going to color it, probably green, and around it, I'm gonna color it blue, like the ocean. Then I did a little, I split my page in half, see? And I drew a tree, 
outside. See, I did some ground down here and everything like that. And then the branch is coming over, and here's my bat. Can you see him? Whoa. See how he's hanging on to the branch with his feet? And I put my fun fact on this page. Fun fact, bats sleep upside down. And I forgot an S in that word, didn't I? Bats, there, I fixed it. I'm so glad I used pencil. Bats sleep hanging upside down. And I need to color this whole page. Use different colors, make it look interesting. And you notice it's just not a stick sticking out there with a bat hanging on it. I actually drew a good illustration. And we really want our illustrations to match the words on our page. Like here is a page about a bat and what it eats. And it's eating a frog. It talks about how it eats a frog and it shows the bat eating a frog. This shows a picture of a bat eating a different kind of fruit. So the pictures have to match the words. That is how they're illustrations. Otherwise, they're just pictures. Illustrate, read your words, match the pictures to the words. Bats live all over North America. They can be found in every habitat, caves, forests, deserts, and cities. Bats like to roost in places that protect them from bad weather, like caves, attics, I had to go to the back, Barns and treetops, they hang upside down when they sleep. Bats prefer warm weather. Some hibernate in caves in winter. Others migrate like birds to warm climates when it's cold. So I read my words, draw my picture, so it matches. And again, I will color that one. And I'm gonna show you one more page. This is talking about what bats eat. And it says bats are omnivores. They eat different things. Most bats eat insects. Bats are nocturnal, so they hunt at night. When most insects are out, they use echolocation to find their prey. And so this was a little bit of a hard one. I drew my bat, and he's making some sound coming out, and here are the rings showing the sound waves going out and coming back. And they're bumping into some insects out here so that he knows where to find them in the dark. And then I wrote a caption for this page. And it says, a bat using echolocation to, at night to hunt insects. So this is a caption. And it go, again, the picture and the caption go with the words that I talk about in, on this page. It would not make sense for my caption on a page about what bats eat to write about bats. Um, some bats are pets. They're not. But that doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't go together. So, I think you get the idea. Let's write a couple more things up here, okay? No markers, a diagram with labels, and then we say some things about no, um, what to use, to use pencil first. Um, illustrations, match the words. And I want you to try to use realistic colors, but lots of colors. Make your pictures awesome, okay? Good. And let me see what else. We already talked about pictures matching the text, that you need to have a diagram, that you need to have a caption and you need to have a fun fact and um, your grown-ups can help you with those things and figuring out where they go and you notice that I put my fun fact or my um, caption in a text box I put a little box around it so it stands out you're gonna want to write those before you color the pictures and I did my fun fact in a little text box too so it stands out um, I think this is gonna be awesome I cannot wait to see a picture of one or two of your pages so when you're done, upload the a picture of a couple of the page you're most proud of to the document that I put in there. I can't wait to see it. And um, you guys are doing awesome, and I'll see you soon. Bye.